Hello, this is Sam from Autobaus and today I'm reviewing my 2017 Lexus LC 500. So without further ado, let's go. So I've had this car for over a year now and it has done 75,000 miles or over 120,000 kilometers and I thought that it was a good time to do a long-term review and here it is. So at the front we of course have the traditional Lexus grill, uh, spindle grill, which some people love, some people hate. I think it works reasonably well with this car. Uh, we have full LED headlights and this beautiful, beautiful red color, which I think looks absolutely phenomenal on this LC. Uh, my probably the only other preference would be maybe blue, uh, structural blue, I believe it's called. And I did want to buy a yellow LC, but it just wasn't uh, wasn't working for me for some reason. I don't know in the pictures it looked okay, but in real life it was just like uh, the lines were somehow just you no know, would blend and disappear. So it wouldn't have uh, as much presence as this red car. So we have 21 inch uh, wheels with Michelin Pilot Sport 4S tires. Uh, this is a performance trim. Uh, the four-wheel steering which was my like one of the very few requirements and you get the carbon roof uh, as well and sir carbon parts right there and this stunning stunning interior which uh, again i absolutely love and moving to the back i think the best part is of course the taillights which you can see in the pov night drive and the mirror taillights are absolutely i don't know i love them i think it's the best part of any Lexus we have ever made. Uh, the diffuser could be a little bit more aggressive and I was always wondering why Lexus didn't do like quad exhaust uh, but uh, you can actually see that these are quad exhaust from very very far away while driving uh, behind it. So I don't know reviewers never shown it to me or everyone but I'm not sure if you can see that but yeah from the back you can see quad exhaust like uh, pretty well like i don't know 80 percent of the time so it looks a bit more aggressive from far away or from further away and yeah let me just uh, turn on the headlights yeah these are <laughs> these are beautiful uh they are not as beautiful at the daylight uh, but yeah I don't know, I, I just adore this, uh, uh, these taillights. Uh, this is the trunk release button, uh, the spoiler that you can always, you can set it up to always be up, which I did, and I'll do a separate video on how to do that, but I think it uh, makes the car a little bit more aggressive, a little bit more fun, and yeah, that works for me, maybe it wouldn't work for you. And that's pretty much it, uh, I think I didn't like the car in pictures and even uh, while seeing it in real life in white uh, I don't know it just didn't look like I don't know hundred thousand dollar car uh, maybe in red it looks a little bit better but I think it's a very good value for your money especially considering the engine and the exhaust note <laughs> which uh, uh, we'll discuss later so as you know if you have seen my other reviews of Lexus products. Uh, I was never a fan of Lexus paint quality and the same still applies to LC500 and over the years this LC has developed so many tiny scratches everywhere that it got ridiculous you know scratches all over the place like randomly appearing scratches and uh, I don't know if it's the paint quality or the way or if the paint is really, really soft. But again, if you're buying LC500, especially in this red, maybe other colors work better. Uh, I highly suggest covering it in protective film in at least few places. So the first would be, uh, since this is all plastic, uh, and if you're driving your car in winter, you might receive these deep scratches. Uh, let, me, let me show you, uh, you see. This is after free stage polishing and uh, ceramic coating, which I did two days ago, uh, prior to this review. And you can still, hopefully you can still see the scratches uh, that remain. Uh, this is likely, I don't know, a few grains of sand that got under the ice and I was removing ice or scraping the ice. Uh, so this is the area that you want to protect. And there is also something happening with the rear wing. Uh, Let's, let's just look at the back one more time. Uh, I mean, 
I absolutely love the taillights. Uh, it's, it's the highlight for me. Uh, it's the most beautiful part for, of this car. So, uh, this is dirt. I don't know if you can see, I'll try to zoom in uh, these scratches. And again, this is after three layer polishing, you know. So this is like, these are much, much, much deeper scratches. Uh, everywhere. This is probably, again, the, the ice accumulating in the winter and with, with some sand maybe. So if you are ever buying Lexus, uh, please consider covering this part with protective film. Uh, because again you will have to repaint it like and I will probably repaint it uh, in some time in the future so another thing I, I want to mention is if you see this plastic part uh, yeah please remember what I'm talking about because I'll discuss it inside the car uh, but basically this thing uh, cost me around 2,000 euros to, to repair uh, and we'll discuss that in, in a little bit. Let's just jump straight to, to the interior because it's, it's really windy out there. And again, the interior is one of the best parts of the LC500. So we are back inside the LC500. So yeah, that plastic part cost me around 2000 euros to fix. Uh, it was basically just a small dent. Uh, of course, it was an insurable item, so that was okay. But again, the, the repair costs and the insurance cost of LC500, like, it was shocking to me <laughs> because I thought it was just like, you know, Lexus. Uh, but no, only two components out of like six in my country, maybe seven, uh, agreed to insure LC500. Everyone else refused because stating like uh, expensive repairs. And the insurance... Uh, with everything covered is around 3,000 euros per year uh, compared to, let's say, 8,000 uh, for my Audi or, I don't know, even even less for my, I guess it's probably 800 or so. Uh, it, it's crazy. <laughs> so it was shocking to me. I didn't expect to pay that much for the insurance uh, and the repairs. Again, it's probably mostly like uh, uh, the exterior parts that are expensive, but it's just, it's just crazy. It was shocking, shocking. Uh, more issues with the LC. So I had the a, AC. It just wouldn't turn on for some reason. Then it fixed itself. <laughs> I don't know what happened. I took it to dealer and it fixed itself. Uh, I don't know uh, that morning. So. Now, in like one out of 15 uh, cases, when you turn on the car, the aircon just smells horribly. I already regist registered it, uh, so dealer would check. But I don't know why. I, I, there are many issues <laughs> with the LC uh, after that many miles. Uh, there is also this brake squeak that I can't reproduce right now. Basically, it's the ABS sensor, and if you push brake really hard and then release it, uh, there is this squeak, and I was told uh, that it's around 2,000 euros again to fix. Uh, it's ABS sensor of some kind, and yeah, the warranty doesn't cover that, and the warranty doesn't cover this. issue so uh, the 10 year lexus warranty is useless <laughs> as far as i'm concerned and i'm sure the porsche would like be more than happy to fix everything because i've had so i don't know it's different beast altogether you know uh, if you want to save money you <laughs> you should drive a porsche and get your warranty uh, any other issues yeah uh, uh, the front light uh, or the headlight uh, washer would uh, wouldn't work uh, 
uh, the right one. So it turns out uh, it's just basically th uh, the drainage or the pipes were clogged up. So the, the Lexus fixed that for me for free, which was fine. But again, one of more issues, and I, I haven't had so many issues with a car, especially a flagship car in a while. And no, I don't think it's a lemon because uh, I mean, this, this issue just started developing right now, you know. And one more, the big one, the transmission has already been changed by the dealer under warranty after, uh, I believe it was around 60,000 kilometers, uh, but don't quote you on that. Uh, basically, it will just do hard shift. Uh, I don't even want to know how much it would cost to, trans to repair transmission uh, without the warranty, but yeah, so many miles and so many issues. And it's one of the reasons why I might consider selling uh, LC or at least not buying the 2017 uh, uh, car uh, and maybe get a 2018 or 19 because also 2017 LC doesn't get airplay and you can actually retrofit or or pay for upgrade where cars starting from 2018 are eligible for Apple CarPlay I believe it's and maybe on road auto but I'm not sure about that uh, I believe it's just a software update so yeah i wouldn't recommend buying a 2017 lc 500 uh yeah now let's just take it for drive so driving <laughs> lc 500 uh so i also wanted to mention this volume knob like every everyone like doug demiro carwow uh, i believe maybe even a few other channels kept saying that it's so heavy and so amazing to to touch and <laughs> I was really excited to, I don't know, adjust the volume for the first time, but basically it's just, it's just a volume knob, you know, uh, nothing special about it. Maybe it's a little bit weighted, but I was expecting it to be like super heavy, you know, no, it's just, it's just a volume knob. And the audio system, it's uh, top spec. It's okay. I, I know it sounds cliche, but I don't really use it. Uh, I listen to the car noise and I thought it was funny when people who drove LC said the same thing, but again, I think the this, uh, the car sounds better than any music. <laughs> so, yeah, let's give it, let's turn up the sport mode. And let's see, let's do a quick launch maybe. Without launch control, uh, I'm not a fan of launch controls on non-Porsches because I don't want to break the car. Uh, <laughs> oh, it's it's the best thing in the world, the, the sound of this car, and uh, the videos don't do the justice when we say that the car is loud. It's loud. It's so loud. Uh, I'll do a video where I try to measure the sound, and again, it's it's absolutely incredible. Uh, Let's, let's do some revving. Oh, it's, uh, <laughs> it, it's, it's amazing. Uh, that, especially with the manual. Oh, yeah. And, uh, <laughs> Dropping to the second, uh, that always brings, uh, I don't know, joy to my heart and uh, I'm still not tired or bored of, of the sound. I thought I would by now, but no, I, I, I adore it, I love it, <laughs> it's the best, it's the best uh, sounding car. Uh, it's not as loud as F-Type, there are no like farts uh, on the upshifts, but Oh man, I, I love the sound. The, the economy, you should ignore it, it's around 22 when driving aggressively, 23 maybe uh, liters for 100 kilometers, uh, which was a shocker to me uh, for the first few months maybe even. I just wasn't uh, ready to refill my car as much, uh, having driven like cars that consume around eight, 10, uh, liters 400 kilometers uh, yeah <laughs> uh, my GoPro has overheated <laughs> I'm sorry about that it's not even that hot uh, 
Yeah, so basically it's a beautiful sounding machine. If you aren't, aren't concerned about the depreciation that you would get after putting a lot of miles, uh, it might be, it might make perfect sense as a daily driver uh, and if you don't care about fuel economy either. But as far as daily driving the car, uh, the suspension or the softness of the suspension has really surprised me and these settings don't really make that or any difference, at least as far as I can tell, minus the uh, transmission and the shifts, uh, but uh, the, the suspension itself is probably, I don't know, identical. Uh, but yeah, the car is really soft. Uh, it's it's much softer than the Lexus IS, uh, even on s that the one that has like small small wheels, and even the uh, Lexus NX, uh, not not the 2023. Uh, released but the previous N NX uh, it's stiffer and harsher than this LC500 so again it's a sports car or coupe or Grand Tourer call it however you want uh, is pleasant to drive of course if you're coming from 7 series or I don't know Audi A8 uh, <laughs> you might say otherwise but having driven sports cars or S-line trims or uh, just sporty cars uh, it's probably the softest cars, the softest car I have driven, and it's not bouncy like uh, BMW 6 Series, uh, not not float, you know. Uh, yeah, I think as far as data driving it, uh, you you should be okay with that. Again, the, the suspension surprised me the most. Uh, also, you get the attention, <laughs> bad fuel economy, and depreciation if you put a lot of miles. So yeah, there are pros and cons. Uh, but having said all of that, and I did say a lot of negative things because every other review just keeps on telling how how amazing this car is. Of course, we don't have to deal with the issues repairing it and everything, and the sound is always fun. Uh, I would not recommend buying the older LC. Maybe we have fixed some of these issues with, uh, I don't know, 2018, 19 car. Maybe it is a lemon, but Again, I'm not the only one with these issues. And if it wasn't for a poor Lexus warranty, which doesn't acknowledge these as things to fix under warranty, uh, I wouldn't have these issues. And perhaps I would recommend the car. For now, this car is for a very specific uh, niche or for people that uh, really appreciate the car. And also, if you want to get the best value, you buy the, the oldest LC. Uh, but please don't, uh, please don't get the 2017. I also heard that we we have fixed or tuned the suspension uh, from 2018 or 2019. So again, there are just more reasons to buy the the newer LC uh, minus the latest one, which has like this horrible screen on top. Uh, I really hate that. Uh, so yeah, will I keep the car? Uh, what I plan to do? Uh, I'll probably drive it for another year or so. Uh, I don't know what to buy next because I really enjoy the sound and it's. I can't really go back to a quieter car and with European regulations and uh, sound emissions going stricter and stricter. I, I I'm just confused what to do and what to buy. So that was my Lexus LC500 review, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, please see my other LC500 videos if you can. Uh, these include like POV, night drive, day drive. Uh, and yeah, thank you for very much for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye.